Hey guys, Jared for Trident Fly Fishing here today, and we're going to be tying a 20 inch stone, which is one of my favorite early season patterns. Uh, it's a great searching pattern, it's a great dropper, it's a great anchor for a Euro Nymph rig. Uh, I think everybody should have a couple. You know, I fish them all the time. Uh, let's get going. So, we're going to be tying this on a Daiichi 1270. You can use any curve shank hook. I like to use uh, Tamco 200Rs as well, and I like them, you know, we're going to do it in a size 10, but I like them up to a size 4. Um, we're going to be putting a bead on it, and then we're also going to wrap it with lead wire to get it down quick. Um, for the tail, we're going to be using dark brown goose biots. You can use turkey as well. And we're going to rib it today with uh, medium copper UTC wire. You can use gold, you can use tinsel, whatever you'd like. Yeah. For the body, I'm just going to use uh, peacock curl. And then for the thorax, I'm going to use uh, fox squirrel dubbing. You can use any sort of picky uh, dubbing because we're going to use it as legs as well. And then for the legs, we're going to switch it up and use coctillion. For the wing case, again, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Um, so I have some pheasant tail here that I've treated with flex seal. Uh, you can use any sort of flexible head cement for the top. It just improves the durability and gives it a little bit of shine. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do uh, just to help with my proportions and to get the fly down is I'm going to use the lead wire. So I think for a fly this size, it's going to need about 10 wraps. And just seat, seat it behind the bead here. For thread, I'm just using UTC 70 and olive color here. So I'm going to bring the thread back right to the hook point, and then I'm going to tie in our tail, which is just going to be some natural biots. So to tie these in, you want to make sure that they face opposite ways so they curve out to get a nice splayed tail. When I tie them in, I like to create a little thread bump just to splay them apart. And for the length, I like them just about half the length of the shank. It's just a loose wrap just to get them on the hook and then I can position them when I get them where I want them and then just tie them down it's important with this fly to keep the proportions and the taper so I'm just gonna bring the biots right behind the uh, tie-in point here for the lead just snip them off. Next I'm going to tie in my copper wire and again I'm going to tie it right behind the lead here and keep it on my side of the hook shank. Then all the way back to the biots here. Bring the thread up Next we're going to tie in the hurl, and I think for a hook this size we're going to need four or five of them. Just grab them by the tips here, align them the best you can, and then just cut a break off the tips so they're even. Again, tie them in right here, behind the lead. Bring it back. and return your thread. So because peacock curl is a pretty fragile material, I like to twist them as I wrap them. And it just kind of makes it as one piece instead of four. It makes it a little stronger. I'm going to bring this all the way right up almost to the bead here before I tie it off. 
then tie each individual one down then back so I'm gonna break them off just creates a cleaner fly here so we're gonna counter wrap the wire again to improve the durability here of the peacock curl so I like pretty tight turns Alright, just tie that off with a couple wraps. Alright, just helicopter it off. Next, we're going to tie in the wing case, which again, I'm using pheasant tail here. That's been treated. All right. So you want a piece about the width of the hook gap here, maybe a little bigger. I'm gonna tie that in right on top of the hook shank here. And I'm tying it with the, uh, there's two sides to it a light and a dark. I'm going to tie it with the light side up so that when I pull it over you get the dark. Again, just make sure it's right on top of the hook shank. Next I'm going to dub the body. So we're going to use this pretty uh, buggy squirrel dubbing here with a lot of guard hairs which will be good because we're going to pick it out later. Let's just make a little noodle here. And again, we want it to be pretty buggy, so if stuff's sticking out, that's good. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm using Cock de Leon for the legs. So how I'm gonna tie it is I'm just gonna create a little V so I can tie the legs in on either side of the body. I just want to get them on there loose and measure the length first before I fully tie them down. Make sure they're evenly distributed. All right, tie that down. Just cut it off clean. All right, so now we're going to pull the wing case over and tie that off. And just make sure it's nice and wide and flat, not bunched up. You'll see it'll kind of spread the legs out as well. Just again, just a loose wrap over the top. Um, I like to take a couple wraps in front as well, and then two behind. And then you got to take some pretty sharp scissors and get real close to this. So don't leave a tag. Looks pretty good. Clean that up. And throw a whip finish. Just three turns is fine. So one thing I like to do with this fly is just pick the dubbing out underneath here. I like to pick it out and then kind of comb it to either side just to make the profile wider and flatter like a stone fly and kind of add to the legs here. Looks pretty good. So that's the 20 inch stone. Uh, thanks for watching guys. You can get all the materials at tridentflyfishing.com.